you understand or if you know anything about the peculiarity or the history about this monarchy. Uh, it's not, even though the succession process for all the, the waves comes to a peaceful resolution at the end, the outcomes haven't always been as straightforward as anyone would imagine. There have been instances where um, brothers have succeeded the monarch. There have been instances where um, one who ought to have been gave it up for a nephew or was it an uncle that was older. Um, there have been instances where um, the elder son did not get it. So I'm saying all that to say that there is evidence to show that it's not necessarily straightforward or automatic. And having that in mind, you know, is very important. And also really believing in providence, in God's hand, in everything, even when it does not appear to go the way you imagined. Really just having that in the back of your mind makes journeying easier. Not easy, easier. So I think that's how I will attempt to answer that part of the, of the question. To the second part about reconciliation of um, traditional institutions and uh, one's faith, Christianity. Once again, this is a, a question that comes up, is coming up quite a fair bit over the last uh, uh, 12 to almost 16 months. And I'll say one thing I find is the spiritual world is a neutral place. When I say it's a neutral place, anybody can, it's like the internet, anybody can access the spiritual world. Traditional, people who have their indigenous beliefs, Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, you can have access into the, into the spiritual world. And that space is a plane where there is interaction. The access through which, or the, the way through I, which I access that spiritual world is Christ. And for me, going there through him and being in him, anything that wants to try to manipulate or do whatever it wants to do, I just try not to pay too much attention to that. And, but that, that, that response may almost make it sound too easy. But when you actually want to open your eyes to see, what I find is that, especially in my own faith, when you look at the Old Testament, if you are really paying attention to our African traditional um, systems, you will find that oftentimes they are mirroring, replicating what was in the Old Testament. If your eyes are really open, you see it. It is, it's, al it's almost, it's like it's hiding in plain sight and something that is hiding in plain sight, you can almost miss it. But because sometimes certain people's eyes or understandings are not open, this is where religion comes in where we now start dividing ourselves and now saying, you know, thinking that one has autonomy or um, they are the sole custodians of a thing. And the truth of the matter is that was not the original intent when God Almighty created things. And monarchy is an institution that he created. And monarchy is an attempt to replicate how he governs in heaven. It's not an attempt to replicate man's system. It's an attempt to replicate heaven's system. And so for me, journeying and your eyes are open with each passing day, you see more things, there's more revelations as to what 
culture and tradition is and what it originally was intended to be. And the unfortunate thing about what's that gap, what it originally was intended to be and what it has become is man. Man kept fine tuning and in man fine tuning he tends to drift away from what was originally intended even though he may not realize that he's drifting away from original intention but when you identify with the original intent it's almost easy it's it's like it's easier to sail through what it has become because you are going back to what it was originally intended to be life I would say it has taught me many things and some are more, some stand out more than others. So there is a process through which we must go and initially and I'm getting like visual images because I'm hearing my younger son crying for his mother. And that is a reminder that initially in life, all you know at that stage is mother, maybe father. But with time, father, siblings. You tend to know just the, the pleasant things of life. Yes, there are some pains, but as you grow and you are no longer a child, you really start seeing the other parts of life. And oftentimes, these things may not be, usually are not, as sweet and pleasant as it was when you started growing up. But it's very important that you quickly embrace these things that are not pleasant. Not because you want to live a sad life, but it's because there is a reason why God allows these things. And I think it's also tied to that question of, you know, turning points in life. You know, the Bible says it's better to go to a house of mourning than a house of celebration because I think from that point of view you really see that you see the completeness of life and if you are not able to look at both sides and have an appreciation for both experiences it's not a complete experience I'm also thinking about eating sweet things and everybody loves to eat sweet things but the things usually that are bitter, not pleasant tasting, often have better effects on your body than the sweet things. So once again, quickly embracing both sides. According to the laws of the land, the resource that is under the land belongs to the government. It does not belong to the people because as I said we're not a sovereign nation per se now if that law wasn't there you will see me fly literally because I will not have to call Abuja and say I would like to do XYZ and then they give you a whole list of loopholes you have to go through go and see this regulation go and see this man and all that in a normal process aside from the underbelly of uh, not so straightforward practices make sure you see this man make sure you see this man and that further complicates the process so if there was no land use act per se I am well within my powers my rights to go to the United States go to Qatar go to Singapore and say this is what I want and I will raise funds to do X it's that's why you call it a kingdom it's a king's vision in his domain so but the setup does not allow you just take off and do that so once again within these restrictions and these um, uh, parameters 
there's always the approach of partnering even with these foreign foreigners who have been mentioned but you now have to package yourself in a way that the government cannot resist the creativity of your packaging because their interests or their part has been considered because everybody is looking for value add in Nigeria, in the world, but especially in Nigeria. Especially when everybody feels like they have exhausted every means to easily benefit from oil, gas. So when you come up with a creative solution or a creative approach and you having the credibility of being uh, an indigenous natural leader, it's very difficult to resist. So it is in that inner packaging and uh, partnerships that I believe is the way forward. Whatever it is, and not just restricted to oil as it were in worry, even looking um, towards uh, agriculture, towards culture, towards tourism, because it all creates an economy. Um, and I'm, I'm emphasizing this because nations that are larger, who have larger deposits than we do, such as Saudi Arabia, um, Kuwait and all, they are looking to diversify. Saudi Arabia does not care if Chevron and Shell leave because Saudi Aramco, they are doing the business. But even Saudi Aramco is also looking to see, hey, how can we diversify what we're doing because if not they will be left behind so even if you want to argue that Saudi Arabia and Saudi Aramco are here because the last 50 years they've done well or their unique situation gave them that advantage they are not as diversified in terms of um, uh, peoples and interests as Nigeria we are here but now both of us need to take advantage of our situations, unique as it may be, and move forward. And it's going to come down to creativity.